اوكي All right, we're going to get started. You guys could join Zoom if you want, or you could just follow here. Either way. Um, so let's get started. So last time we learned, uh, last two lessons, we learned HTML, and we learned uh, beginner, beginner CSS. Uh, today we're going to learn more CSS, basically. And also we're going to review the Git and GitHub, because a lot of people didn't do the Git and GitHub. Uh, we need to understand how Git works and how GitHub works. So today is going to be us talking about responsive web design, basically more advanced website of how the website looks like. And then we're going to also talk about um, Git and GitHub. So let's let's get to it. We just uh, created this little design. Um, so responsive web design, what is responsive web design? Responsive uh, layouts, combine features of fixed, adaptive, and fluid websites. So basically it's saying like when you go to a website, you could either go from your phone, from your computer, you want the website to look exactly the same. Like you want it to show nice way. Like you don't want it, when you go to a phone, you don't want it to be look, look ugly or when you go to the computer, it looks smaller or vice versa. So this used to be actually a problem back in the day uh, around like early 2000s where, where they were building websites. They were like, you know what? Phones are coming to, to the world, like iPhone uh, 2007. Um, how, do we, how do we do that? So when iPhone came out 2007 uh, and then 2008, websites look really bad on phones. They, you have to zoom in and that's where the pinch came from. Like you have to pinch and zoom to see what's on the website. The text is really small and all that. Over time, people came up with responsive web design. So... We, we need to figure out how can we make our website look nice on a desktop, on a tablet, and then on a mobile. That's basically what responsive web design is. Okay, features of responsive web design. Uh, design is often divided among desktop. We talked about that. And then we also use something called units uh, are used throughout the website. So uh, you guys know pixels, right? So pixels are called absolute um, units. Can you please, please pay attention? Um, um, units uh, are, we have pixels. So there's different ways to define not, uh, like text uh, sizes of different blocks and stuff. So we use a responsive unit. So before we were using pixels, pixels are not good for uh, responsive. They're just fixed in one place. So if you zoom out, it's just gonna be a little uh, small. So what we wanna do is we wanna change the, uh, we wanna change the unit to something else, which we will learn today. We'll also use something called media, media query today, which will help us basically figure out which device we're in. So uh, how do you know which device uh, is the website being viewed from? So we're gonna call something called media query, which is in CSS. Um, so that's that's what we wanna do. Uh, so CSS units, what we just talked about. So there is a different way. So uh, money CSS properties take length, values such as width, margin, padding, font size, all that. So we usually use like uh, 10 pixels, 10 px. But what we want to use is something like 2em, which is a different way of defining the, the width and the height. Um, these are um, pixels on cm. Uh, I think that's centimeter. Uh, these are uh, absolute length. Basically, they stay the same. So they never change if you zoom in, zoom out, or change the device or anything. Um, so it's really important to use a relative length. So relative length are, for example, M, rem. These are just, you put it after the number and they stand for something. So let's say uh, one rem is equal to 16 pixels. So it's just like math. Basically, there's actual websites where you could go to and could, like convert pixels to rem. So usually we just use rem. We're not going to use M. So the rem is basically a responsive unit where if you use it, it changes depending on the device you're in, right? Um, there's also other ones here. There's the v, uh, VW, V edge, and percentage. So a lot of times you see a number and then after that percentage, right? Just normal percentage. Percentage is good, but it is uh, too, too fluid. So you wanna make sure like you stop a certain place. You don't want the thing to be too big so that you, know, you can't see anything or you don't want it to be too small. So percentage is good, but it's too flexible. But we're, we're not going to use a lot of percentage. We're just going to use it in one place. 
we will learn that. Also, if you want to create a website that's responsive for different devices, there's something called viewport. So you guys remember in the HTML, in the header, you put, what do you put in the header? So you guys remember. Like, uh, CSS there? Yeah, you put the CSS in the head, right? Mm -hmm. So in the head, you also put other things like meta tags. So the meta tags, one of the meta tags is viewport. So viewport, basically what it does is, is just a little code that never changes. It's just a little snippet of code. It's right here. This is a snippet of code. Basically, you put it in the head. It tells the device, either the computer or the phone, um, it grabs the size of the device, basically. If it's too small, it grabs the size of that device, and then it changes the website to that device. So it's just a little code that helps us uh, understand which device we're in. So every time you want to create a website that's responsive, you have to have that little uh, line of code within the within the head, right? And we could go into it, we could define, uh, talk about what it is. Basically, it's a meta tag. The name of it is viewport. Basically, here it's saying, um, find the size of the device. And then at the end, it says initial scale one. Basically, make it uh, fit in the device. Make it like 100%. So one it stands for 100% of the website. Basically, zoom in the website, make it fit into the device. So you don't have to know exactly what it means, but you have to have this part in your head every time you want to make a responsive website. Uh, media queries, we just talked about it. Media queries is part of CSS. So basically it's built in into CSS. So what media query does is it's basic rules, just like programming where you create rules and stuff. It's in CSS. Basically you say, okay, um, in the CSS you define the device. So you say, okay, for I for phones, I want it, I wanted my website to look like this this way. So the way to define it is by saying just in your CSS, you just say media uh, media screen and basically you're defining the, the device or the media screen. You say when the width, the minimum of the width is 480 pixels, then make it look like this, right? So uh then if I if you, somebody's using a device the background is gonna look like light green if if the, if they come under that size, 480, if the device is 480 uh, pixels. So media query is really important and we're gonna to touch on this. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use all this, um, but you could put in a lot of CSS in here, to in here. And then you could just change this number. So for tablets, you could just say something like 780, because it's like 780. And then for phones, it's like 480. And then you could just leave the rest basically. So min width will, will help us basically everything uh, above 480 will not be, it will not be light green, basically it will be another color. So that would be the, your normal CSS, right? So we're just kind of defining only the dev the smaller devices. And we'll see example, you don't have to understand it right now, but media query is really important for responsive web design. Another thing we'll talk about today is something called Flexbox. So Flexbox is basically um, it's in CSS, just like media query is built in CSS. And it's a way to define uh, the blocks. You guys remember in the HTML on the last lesson, uh, you have to put two uh, boxes next to each other, like the food, you know, the rice and all that. The box has to fit next to each other. That was, the, that was actually one of the, um, let's, let's go back to week two. So the image here, as you can see, I told you guys to put these next to each other, right? This box and this box next to each other. And that's hard to do without Flexbox. Flexbox help us uh, put all this into one container, all these four, and then say, okay, divide into two lines or something like that. So just uh, rules that help us basically outline things into smaller. If the, dev if the device is smaller or you make it smaller, it fits normally. Like if this one comes here, and they stack on, on top of each other. If the device is bigger, they just stretch out. And then if it's way bigger, then this goes over there and you have three of them next to each other automatically. So it's just like a simple rule in CSS, uh, which we will learn uh, right now. So Flexbox, that's basically the purpose of Flexbox is to, is a layout mode that provides for better arrangement of all the pages elements that behave in predictable mode. Just so we said, like we said, it's basically the, blo the blocks. It doesn't have to be blocks. It could be anything next to each other. 
you could like automatically arrange them and, and whatever device you use, it will automatically resize basically. Plus box layout gives a complete control over the direction, alignment, order, size, box. So it has a lot of things. You use this, you put this in your CSS, you say display blocks. So th this word display is in CSS. I, I, I don't think we talked about it last time, but we'll talk about it today. Display is basically like how you wanna display whatever you see in your, in your page, right? So you could say display block, you could say display inline block, there's different rules. But one of the rules is display flex. And when you say flex, already the browser knows, okay, let me align these things in, in a good way. Um, and we'll see an example of it. And also Flexbox is part of CSS. It's not like something else we're gonna grab from somewhere. It's pure CSS basically. Okay. And let's see how Flexbox looks like. Actually, these are properties of Flexbox. So as we say, like there's different things you could do with Flexbox. First thing you need to know is there's something called Flexbox container. You don't need to do any of, you don't need to write this, but you just need to know Flexbox has a container. So like we, I showed you just the example before, you have four boxes and you wanna put them in a container, right? So that container is important. If you don't have a container and you apply the, the Flexbox in that container, it will not work. So you need to know the container and I'll show you an image of that too. Uh, flex item is a way to align items in like uh, basically a, a uh, vertical way. Um, and then flex uh, direction is the direction where if you want it to be uh, horizontal or vertical, like I just showed you four boxes, the two of them at the bottom, two of them at the top, then you could define that way. Like if, if you want them all to be in like one line, then that would be flex direction column or flex direction uh, row like that. There's a lot of them. I'll, I'll share with you a website where you could just see all this, like a cheat sheet. Flex wrap defines if the item should wrap or not. Basically what this one is saying, wrap is basically like, if you make the device smaller, you want the boxes to come under and like fill in the space. If you don't want it, then you could just skip that one. There's other rules to justify line all this. So we're just going over right now, but I'll show you an example of how to use this together. And this is a, basically a graph of how it looks like. So basically the container, you apply display flex in here. This is uh, the purple area. You apply uh, flex, uh, display flex, and then it will just basically figure out how these are aligned, right? You could add more rules to it and it will just kind of like rearrange basically if you, uh, if you squeeze this in and make it smaller, if you added a flex wrap, it will move this guy to the bottom here, right? So because you, you said wrap basically, like don't uh, go over the border basically. So, and then these are called items. So the rules that apply to the container, which is like the top box, apply to the ones inside basically. So you're just basically saying, you're just basically talking about like how you wanna display these boxes. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle, basically. Like if you if you have like blocks of let's say you know uh, in in games or like let's say you're uh, you have a car and you want to fill in everything every space you want to fit in in a certain way. Just like that, you use Flexbox and it will automatically fit in the boxes in a browser. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a time. Yeah, time. Okay. Um, we could take a break. Um, okay. Um, yeah, let's, let's take a five minute break. No problem. Go to Evans. Yeah. Is it working for you? Are you getting this stuff? I, yeah. Yeah. Just be like, I have more good calls. Okay. I, I like, I took a class in my high school. So oh, I nice. did a computer science class. Wow. So I took a, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it goes over some people's head. 
takes more more time. You have to try a couple of more times. Yeah. Yeah. It's like math. So it's like math. So you have to remember the code or something like that. So yeah. Yeah. Like so you also like the math too. So. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, if if you like math, then you're gonna like code. That's yeah. good. <laughs>
Have you seen a marker for this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. All right. Okay, you guys ready? We have to go back to it. We don't have a lot of time. Okay. So we were talking about uh, Fluxbox. So Fluxbox is basically um, it's basically part of CSS, and we use it to outline the website and how the website is is basically um, we want to use it for responsive websites. So with the units we talked about that are responsive and Fluxbox, it's gonna help us basically design a very responsive website because if we're using units then that will help us basically resize the text or the sizes of containers easily, uh, fluidly, depending on which device. With Flexbox, it will help us basically move boxes around so everything looks nice within every device. So the container is basically where we're gonna apply, which would be like a div, like uh, one HTML element basically. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna apply display flex on the container and then whatever inside the container, which would be like maybe a block of a couple of texts or something like that, then that would basically resize depending on which device we're in. Uh, flexed, flexed direction basically help us basic uh, like which way we wanna uh, align the boxes. Remember we had the boxes on the website. So if you want the boxes to be in horizontal way, then you say raw, row. If you want it to be uh, basically vertical, and you want them all to stack on, on top of each other, you say column. So all you need to know is just every time you create a display flex, you could choose, but by default, it's a row, right? If you just say display flex, by default, it's a row. But if you want everything to stack, like in a mobile, like when you go to a mobile, like different uh, like boxes stack on, on top of each other so that they're bigger in the device, then you use the column. So here you just replace column instead of row. And we'll see an example of that. Uh, let's get to our project here. So like, did you say the, the website I made this week was not responsive? Was no, no. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was good for like computers. Like if you, up. yeah, if you open on a phone, it doesn't look good. Yeah, it looks, it uh, things are just too small or too big or not aligned correctly. So yeah. Um, so this is the lesson today. Uh, we're going to cover, uh, we're going to understand responsive web design. That will be our uh, objective. We'll understand Flexbox and how to use it. 
Uh, I'll give you a resource on Flexbox. There's a website where you could go to and it has a cheat sheet. So if we click that, it's this website and it has all the like different Flexbox uh, and also basically how to apply it. And we'll talk about, if we have time, we'll talk about some advanced CSS, but we might not have a time, right? We also need, we also, yeah, uh, probably like 8, 8, 20, 8, 30. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and also we'll cover the Git and GitHub and I'll show you guys how to uh, submit the assignment with Git and GitHub because from here on, we don't want to use Codebin. Codebin is just for start and for beginner. From here on, we want to move on from Codebin to GitHub. If you're looking for a job in the job market uh, and you want to become a developer, they will not even know what Codebin is. They, they will tell you, we don't know what that is. You need to use GitHub, you need to use Git, and basically, Git helps you work with the team, right? So, uh, like somebody you're working with a, another developer, they will tell you, "Oh, go to to the repo. You have to clone it, and then you have to create your own branch, and you have to submit it or push your code." So you kind of have to understand all that lingo, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about responsive web design. We kind of touched a little bit, uh, responsive web design, uh, but we want to see in in the style, basically, we want to see like how it looks like. So let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not codebin, no, no more codebin. Yeah, codebin is good for just a quick code or something you want to test, but for production or for job, they usually use GitHub. Uh, there's other websites called Git GitLab, which is similar to GitHub too. All right. So in our let's open a um. We're gonna open a a code bin just to test things out this time. So this time, what are we, is this is the assignment similar to the last time? Uh, yeah. So you're gonna take the same website we built the last time. Or the the two restaurant. The yep. And then we're gonna add responsive design to it. So we're just gonna gradually go from HTML to CSS to responsive design, and kind of build up. It's gonna look yeah. Like this. It's gonna look like that. Yeah. Or like the whole website. Yeah, we want it to look like that in a mobile. In Not, the phone. Yeah, in the phone. And in the desktop, we want it to look like, like last assignment. Right. Um, so let's open a new code bin. So I'm just uh, kind of showing you examples of uh, how we're going to do responsive design. Uh, before we do that, let me show you on normal websites. If we go to any website, let's go. And this will be the project we're going to build today in the, in the class. Mm -hmm. So this is very responsive. Like if you make it smaller, it, you see how things change? Mm -hmm. So the cards, these cards stack up when it gets smaller uh, and things look nicer in mobile. Uh, and also as you can see, the menu is stacked up like that. So the menu is like that uh, vertically, but in real world, you wanna put that uh, navigation of the menu into a, a place that's hidden. So on normal websites, you have like something called hamburger, you put in, but you have to do that when we reach JavaScript. So you use that for JavaScript. But for now, we're just gonna make it look like this. So it looks nicer and everything, everything becomes bigger or smaller, depending on how big it is. So that's what we're gonna build today. Um, so I was gonna show you um, in the browser, you could right click and, and go inspect. And then on here, you see, you could change between uh, desktop to mobile, right? And also on here, it has basically the different phones and tablets and stuff in your browser. So this would be Chrome. So iPhone 14 Pro Max, it's gonna look like that, right? We could zoom in a little bit to 100%. The good thing is like this website is responsive, but if the website's not responsive, it's not gonna look like that. So uh, we can see an example right of website that's not responsive. We look at other uh, assignment, but basically what I'm trying to show you is you could also use uh, responsive here and you could move it around. You could resize it like this, make it bigger. So when you're testing your project, you use this instead of like making the browser smaller, you could use this in your, and also we see the number here. So this number here up here is important. That's what we'll be using for the media query. So the media query we talked about where like it's a rule in CSS where if you reach certain size, then change it how the page looks like. 
we're going to be using that um, this here, right? We're going to use that number. All right. So that's that's one example. Um, within here, if we make it smaller and we check the CSS, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. If we check the CSS here, usually the CSS is on the right. You see there's media query right there or media. So that's what we're going to be adding, basically, if we want to make everything responsive, is the media. So that's in real world, that's how it looks like. Um, so let's let's keep going. Uh, so let's get started with, um, yeah, Flexbox. So let's talk about Flexbox, basically. So I, I showed you guys the website, uh, the cheat che sheet here. So this website I'll share with you, and it's also in the on our student portal. This website is basically just a collection of flex boxes and descriptions of what they do. Um, so in in CSS, if you if you trying to create a flex box, all you have to do is just whatever in your CSS you just say display flex, right? And I'll show you an example how to use that tool. And here I showed you in the slide is a direction and different ways. So let me show you as an example in real world in, in our code. So we're going to create like a couple of uh, blocks here in HTML. So we're going to create a div. Inside the div, we're going to create a, let's say, another div. Uh, or let's create something like a per oh. Let's see here. So I'm just showing you this as an example. Uh, we're going to add maybe three of them here. Um, and then let's say uh, text two. Let's say so we know which one is which. Text two, and then text three. So we what what we want to do is we want to apply a, a flex box on this, right? So we have we have three. We actually have two. So let's actually add one more here. Uh, B text three. So we have three items here. So we want to apply, if we want to apply a flex box on this, where we need to add like a class here, right? So let's say, let's call this container. You could call it whatever you want. So this basically helps us apply CSS. We could also apply inline CSS, but the container, we could just say container. And in here, this is where we, where we basically define our uh, flex box. So we say display. Flex. So as you can see, those uh so what we could do is we could change the background of these. So let's change the background. So one way to change the background is by just saying container and then P. So that's basically saying every um actually we want to make them different colors. So let's actually add them their own CSS. So each one we want it to be a different color. Um let's actually call these diff. If we say P uh, paragraph, it has a different properties and stuff. So it's going to complicate things. So let's just call it deep here. Um, so we're going to create like three boxes, basically. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so we're going to say class uh, text one here, and then another class here, text one, text two, and then another class here, text uh, three. Okay. So in the CSS, we want to uh, create a background for each one of them, right? So we say dot text one. We want to add a background color, right? The background color, we could just say something like, let's say blue for the first one. As you can see, it adds a, like a blue background there, but it's too small. And also the text is basically like um, black. So we need to add, uh, we need to say, we need to add some padding. So we can give it a space. Add maybe 30 pixels of padding. So we create like a box. And also we need to change the uh, the color of the font or, or the text. So let's just call it white. Okay, like that. So we have like a small box. And then we're just gonna create a, two more, more boxes like that, but different colors. So the next one would be text two. Um, and then we're just gonna say background color. Uh, let's call it uh, green um, padding. Let's give it the same padding. 
30 pixels. And then let's give the color. When you say color, you're just saying the text color, basically. So we call it white. Okay. Double green. So now um they're all next to each other. Um that's fine. Um and then we could just copy this and just change the instead of us typing it again. We could just copy it and paste it. Change to text three. And then change the color to let's say um orange. Okay. So we have three boxes there. So our goal is basically to make these boxes fit into the screen. So if we make it smaller, if we make it smaller, they kind of resize themselves basically. Sorry if you can't see it. Um yeah. So they're all the same. It's just uh, the the colors are a little bit different. Okay. Um. So now we have that. So what do we need to do is we need to add some properties here. So if you, if you want to change how like the basically you want to make them fit the whole page and space between them, you put the flex box inside the container. So now we go back to the our uh, the the paper the cheat sheet. And then we find where where can we what can we do to make them fit the page. So just fight content kind of looks promise promising. So space between kind of makes it look like it's fitting the whole space. So we have three boxes. We also have three boxes, and it's it's making it fit the whole page. So we're gonna add just fight content, and then we're gonna say space between, right? So we're gonna go back to our container. We're just gonna say just fight content space between okay so that that's going to make it fit the whole page okay so if we make the page smaller it's just gonna uh, keep that ratio of basically fitting fitting in this space right so that's that's one um we also want it to like one when we make it really small we want it to go to the the like the orange one to go to the bottom basically because right now it's just going off the screen. So to do that, there's something called uh in in here wrap. We just saw a little bit ago. So this one, flux wrap, flux wrap helps us make it makes it so that if we go overboard, it just moves it to the bottom. So all we have to do is just say flux wrap, and then we say wrap. So you have to choose between these options. So you have no wrap wrap and then wrap reverse. So we're just gonna say wrap. So let's add that into the container. So every time you wanna add something um, flex box, you have to add it to the container because we're trying to affect the three boxes, all of them at once basically. Uh, so we're just gonna say flex wrap and then we say wrap, I think that's how it is. So it's not gonna make any difference now, but if we, if we make it really small, see, as you can see, move to the bottom, right? And then if you make it real, real small, then it becomes like a stack. So that's very powerful because um, when you make the website responsive, you want things to like move in place automatically, just like these boxes. So that, this is what we're doing. So container in the HTML is basically the top one. And here's where we learn about parents and children uh, elements. So the div is a parent element. And then the these divs inside are children. So uh what are these to each other? Three of them. They're siblings. Siblings. Yeah. So siblings, and then if you put one inside it, inside the other one. So let's say in here we put another, let's say a P tag something. So what is that B tag to the main container? Okay. Yep. Uh grand granddaughter or whatever, grandchild. Grandchild and a uh, grandparent, right? So you just use a family, uh, basically, terminology for this. So this is really important because we want to make sure the display flex only affects children. It only affects the children divs. It does not affect other, other elements. So if, if you, the one we just saw, the child, it's not going to affect. So if you, if we put, um, three elements inside here, the text one, uh, the display flex will not affect it. So you have to put a display flex on this one 
the parent element. It has to always be on the parent element, right? So that's really important. Okay. So there's a lot of other ways to do it. There's also a way to align them. So let's say this, we have this. We want to, instead of uh, the direction to be a row, so this is a row now, by default, display flex is just a row. If we want to change it to a column, we just say flex direction uh, column here. Right? And then just kind of like stacks. Uh, I'm not sure why it's a nice stack. Flex direction. Uh, let's get rid of the wrap. No? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm missing the other. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, it stacked on top of each other. But the problem now is it fit the whole page. And that's because we need to, like, define if we want to just keep it to the right, to the left. By default, it just fits the whole thing. Okay. So now, like, if we make it smaller, it just kind of, like, looks nice. Um, so when we're do when we're making a mobile and we're using the media query, we want to use uh, flex uh, flex direction column so that when you reach a phone size, you want the boxes to stack on top of each other. How did how did you get the colors? So... Uh, the colors I uh, I basically added a class to each each one, and then each one I added a background color, so each one has a different its own different color. Okay. All right. And then you just um do you just copy that and then just name it to those colors, you know? For each of the boxes. Yeah. Okay. New pen? So, yeah, you could create a new pen now. Um yeah, each one I copy it. You mean the CSS or yeah. the yeah, she says I copy it. Yeah, each I basically change the number basically over there. That's the class over there, and I define the class here. Just like the uh, two, uh, text three, text two, text one, and it's over there. And each one has its own different background. Um. So that is uh basically there's other properties too. So you just have to kind of like uh bookmark this page. I bookmarked this page when I was like going to school. Uh, the the CSS tricks. If you go to the uh, the student portal, it's there. But I'll share it in the chat too when we leave. Uh, I'll I'll share it in the email too. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay. So yeah, so I would say there's also another one called um align items. So this one is uh the, the opposite of of justify content. So this one, what it does is let's say let's say we want to uh, remove this. We could keep this, that's fine. Let's remove the flex mm -hmm. direction. So we have them in like that line. You want them to be, let's say, um, 
let's say you have you have like this let's say like this and you want them to uh basically stack or uh, uh vertically in like a even way basically just like we did a space uh, uh space between you could say um can you guys uh, wait for the conversation please um you could say here align item and then you could say uh, either center there's different options here so what the, what is align item so let's just read quickly what is it, what it is so this defines the default behavior for how flex items are laid out in the cross axis cross axis is basically just like horizontal um it's like x axis basically uh so the way we define it is by saying uh align items and you can say stretch so basically when you say stretch this is how it looks this is how stretch looks like it's basically oh, the items become stretch so if we try it right now and we say stretch here it's just gonna fill in like the whole page here actually it didn't fill in let's see uh align item did i spell it right items yeah align items here sometimes if you, if you misspell like one letter it just does not work Line items. I also said wrap here. I think this wrap is gonna mess it up. Uh, line items stretch. Uh, okay. So when we say stretch, we have to give it a we have to give it a a height, right? So it doesn't know how much to stretch. So we have to give it a height. So let's say maybe like two hundred pixels. See, so it stretches to whatever height you give it basically. So if you want to make something big, uh, there's other ways to do it. So you could do flex a start. So this will move it to the top. So if you want items, you don't need the flex wrap if you're doing align items. Um, you could, you could keep it, you could keep it. Uh, but usually if you fill in it, the whole page, it wouldn't make sense because, uh, the whole page is filled with, with your items. Right. Okay. So if you make it smaller, it's not going to wrap anywhere. Like it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so that's why usually it doesn't work together all the time. Uh, and then there's a center, there's a stretch, which we just did. There's a baseline. Baseline, we just, uh, if you have like items that are like different sizes, it will just align all of them in the middle. And then like, yeah, uh, the center is basically similar to baseline. It's a little bit different. But usually people use something like flex a start, flex uh, uh, or fl a center. Center is good for like navigations and stuff. So if you want... The logo and the navigation to align together. You you say uh, align item. Uh, uh, you say center, and then you'll just kind of like center them all uh, together. So we'll see an example of that when we do the assignment. But yeah, that's flexbox. It's basically very very powerful. Um, there's other ways to do this too. Uh, it's called CSS grids. So if you see something called CSS grids, and like in an interview or something, they tell you what is CSS grid. You say it's used for a responsive uh, web design. Uh, it's similar to Flexbox. If you say that, they will understand. So CSS grids and Flexbox are the same. For this lesson, we're just using Flexbox. Um, all right. Uh, and before this, before Flexbox actually came and they, they added to CSS, it was really hard to align things together. You have to use like, uh, you have to move things around manually by yourself. And then you have to use a width and height and all that stuff. It was very confusing. So Flexbox is really powerful. And inshallah, you guys will practice uh, in your lesson. Hmm. Okay, so let's let's get to our project. So we did all that. We understand responsive web design, Flexbox, how it works. Now we're just gonna do our project, which is a this website. So this website basically is a travel website. Um, it has images, it has a hero image. This is called a hero image, so on websites. When you build a website and they tell you build the hero hero slide or your image, it's just basically this big image. Uh, this is the navigation at the top, and then you have uh, four uh, three boxes. This could be the services or something like that, and then you have an image and a text. This could be the mission vision about us whatever, and then you have a form. It's sign up. So we're, we're gonna go over all of them. Uh, one thing we're not gonna do is a the HTML because uh, you guys did the HTML. So we're just gonna copy the HTML. It's gonna have the classes and I'll explain it so we can save time instead of us writing the whole HTML. Um, so we have the HTML here, right? Uh, for this project. It's really not that much, right? It's like about, 
So usually you look at the lines. So it's 55 lines. So that's when they say, how many lines of code did you write? You know, basically the editor shows you how many lines. Ooh, 55 lines. Um, the only difference things from your last project is these things, meta tags on the top. There's a meta tag called uh, character set UTF-8. So this one is basically a universal thing where like if you add emojis or other characters like Arabic or other Chinese language, it's it's going to render it right on your website. If you don't add that character set, some emojis might not render, some languages might not render or show on the website. So in general, if you're creating a website, add that UTF-8 uh, character set. That's just usually a universal thing. And then remember we talked about the viewport. What does the viewport does? What is it there for? That that line viewport. We talked about it in the slide when we're going through it. Isn't it like how you make uh like how earlier you know how you have to make like the two columns? Like, yeah. Sort of thing? Isn't it kind of like doing that for you without like having to do it? Um yeah, in some way, yes. So it's it's part of that. Uh, so let's let's actually test it out. Let's actually take it out and then save it and then view the website. So we're going to stop here and then open it. So this is the website. Let's open. How you view it differently on the phone, right? Yeah, it's, it's related to the phone, yes. So if we don't have a viewport, then what happens is uh, if we make it smaller, as you can see, the website does not change at all. See, it's not responsive at all. It just becomes smaller, but there's nothing. The these things don't stack on top of each other. But if we bring back the viewport, it stacks like that. See, so things change. So if you don't add a viewport, responsiveness will not work at all. So anything you do, media query, flexbox, all that stuff you're doing, you need to have the viewport. So this is must to have. And it's just one line and you never change it on every website. That's how you keep it. You guys know what the title is already. Uh, you guys know how to link CSS. So you already know that. Uh, we did a uh, the navigation here. Sorry about that. The navigation here, we added a div with just the navigation and the logo. So it's a little bit different than last project. Uh, the logo is just in H1 and then you have the navigation in A, A tags. Uh, we have another... Uh, another div here. This div is a hero. It's the image that we show, the big image that we show. Uh, we don't see the image here. Like the image is not here. It's just a class. The reason for that is in the CSS, we can add the image. So I'm going to show you how to use an image in the CSS. So we're just going to take that class and add the properties and the size and all that stuff. And then we are going to add the, the image within there. Um, also, we have other things. These are the boxes that we just saw so each each one of them, as you can see, this is we created a parent element. We just talked about parent element. That's a parent element. So that will have the what? What would it have? The flux box, right? So every time you hear parent element, make sure uh, it's uh, you add a, a flux box there. So we have a class called boxes, and then each box is like this. So it has like the H1, an image, and some text, and that would be just the website we just saw here. So this is the basically this is this area is what we're we talking about now. Um, what else? Let's see. Yeah, and th and that's it. And then at the bottom we have the form. We'll, we'll we'll learn how to do the form here too. So we have a newsletter, H1 paragraph, and then form. A couple of inputs, and then we have the footer. So it's very simple. It's a little bit more advanced than the, the one you guys did before, but it has a similar components to it. All right, so let's let's go to the CSS. So the CSS is here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, remove it and move it somewhere else. So let me create another file uh, or another, let's open another uh, another editor and just put that CSS there for reference. I'm gonna open a new file. Um, let's open it. Actually, let's open a new folder. Let's create a folder here. Um, yeah, let's create it somewhere. New folder. Let's call it travel now. And then let's open that. 
So it's just another one that we, uh, within it, we're just gonna create um, the CSS. So let's just copy the CSS, delete it, and then create one to here. So this would be our, our backup. So styles.css. So that'll be our backup and I'll, I'll move it out of the way. Are we, are we meant to have this? Like, uh, or is it just like- No, no, this is just for me. Oh, okay. So we, uh, we, we start from scratch basically. Okay. So I'm keeping this as a backup. Yeah, yeah, VS, Visual it's Studio. It's yeah, Visual Studio Code. So it's editor. So this is where you type. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a Mac app. No, it's it's a, a Windows and, and Mac too. So I'm just gonna move this to a different desktop just for now. Okay. We're gonna use we're gonna use it as a reference. In the homework, are we gonna use the same option that you're using right now and then fixing it or no, it's GitHub, no? No, you you're gonna work on the Fatima restaurant. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh so we'll we'll learn how to submit it on GitHub. So um, you use the editor that I'm using right now to work on the the Fatima recent. Yeah, use the VS Code, yeah. Um, where is it? Okay, so right here. So we have the project, we have the HTML, but it's empty. Um, so let me share my, let me share one of the, one of the screens here. Extended display. Yeah, so let me move this here. Yeah, so this is easier for me, so it can I can um see both screens at the same time. All right, so I have the source code here, and then I have the the one that we're gonna work on here. I've gotta do it like this. All right, so so we have the project here, the HTML, the CSS. Uh, let me bring in the browser too. Let me bring in the browser. Uh, okay. I'm going to bring in the browser here. So let's get out of the mobile version. So now it looks really bad, right? So this is just the HTML. So let's go back to our editor here. So what we want to do is we want to make, we want to, uh, make it look nice. So the first thing we need to do is, so let me just, uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to define the body, right? So we're just gonna do that. Uh, and then we, we're gonna define the font family, which would be just uh, basically how the font is gonna look like. So this is not that, it doesn't matter that much really. Um, and then the next thing is we're gonna define the margin, remember? We talked about that um, the browsers add margins, like small margin at the sites. We're just gonna get rid of that. Um, so we're gonna say margin zero here. Margin zero. Okay, so we define the bodies. As you can see, the margin gets removed. Uh, the next thing we wanna define is, is what's next after, after that. So what's next after the body? right here, right? So if we want to define the nav navigation, we already have a class called navbar. So how do we call a class in the CSS? How do, how do we call navbar, this navbar? How do we define it in the CSS? How do we call it first before, before we add any CSS to it? How do you call a class? Class, class is always a dot, right? Dot navbar. That's what we do. You just look at the name class here, navbar, and then we just say nav dot navbar, right? And then we define it. So we're here. We want to define the background color first. Um, I already have a color defined. Uh, that's written here: two D two nine four six. Okay. So now, as you can see, okay, that's the color background. All right. Uh, also, what we could do is we could put this next to each other, so we don't have to like keep switching back and forth. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's make it smaller. We don't really need this whole space because we already did that. Okay. So we can see the changes every time we make changes here in the browser. So usually, when you're developing an app, this is what you're going to be doing or a website. 
you're going to put next to each other and you, you're you going to have two computers. That's why developers have two screens. They have one screen with a browser open the application and one screen at the editor. They type something, it automatically changes over there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is display here. So this, we're going to do display flex, but uh, before we even do the background, why are we doing display flex? Let's get rid of the background. Why are we doing the display flex on the nav bar? Remember the nav bar is the logo and also the the navigation. Why do we want to do display flex? So we can align them, right? See now they're on top of each other. What we want to do is we want to align them. We want to make them in one line. So that's why we want to do the display flex. So the minute we do display flex, it's just going to go like horizontal. Let's keep the background for last. Display flex. Remember, display flex is by by default. By default, it's a row. So as you can see, it's a row now. It's a row. But as you can see, the navigation is all the way to the top, and the logo is like at the bottom. All that. So we need to like change all that. We, we want to make. We want to use the um, the te the align items and the uh, content. Uh, what is it called? Justify content to define it. So let's do that. We're gonna say justify content, and then we're gonna say space between. Not space around. There's different options. You say space between. By the way, I'm using a code like some AI, so it hints the code for you. But when you're learning, it's not good to have that. It's just for me to make my job easier. And then we need we need uh, uh, align items, which would basically justify content will sp spread everything into like horizontal way, and then align items will align things basically. Yeah, it will align horizontally and then just for content will push things apart, basically. It will give it enough space. As you can see, the navigations, they have enough space between each other. So here we're just going to say center. So as you can see, the logo and the navigation are now it's like one line. So what does the display flex do? I understand the justify content and align. So, yeah, so, yeah, uh, the, so the display flex, basically what it does is um, it, it makes sure, like, before we did this, we go back. We're just gonna remove it for a second. As you can see, they're on top of each other, so they're not even aligned. So once we say display flex, basically what this is saying is put them next to each other. That's all it's saying. Put all these items in one row. And if we go back to the HTML, as you can see here, this is the parent element. So that div nav bar is the parent element, and it's taking the logo h1 and all the uh, a tags. In one line, so it's doing like H one tag underneath the nav bar. Yep. So these are like these are all siblings, and this is the parent. So we're just kind of aligning them all together. So if we go back to the way it was before, now it's gonna align everything in like one line in a nice way. Um, why is the four other siblings? Why does it go on top of the travel now head? That's, uh, that's that's a good that's a good question. Um, anyone want to answer that? <laughs> so uh, let me let me yeah let me remove yeah let me remove this CSS. When so you could display flex the other four siblings the contact the locations the, all four of those they go on top of the travel yeah like that yeah they go on top of the travel I was trying to figure out why. I don't know why. Even though they're under the same line. And, the, and this is the HTML is right here. Something something to do with the HTML. What are the HTML ta uh, tags we're using? H1. H1. So H1, what does that mean? What's H1? H1. Is it bigger or smaller? Small. Oh, no. It's bigger. bigger. H1 is the biggest. H1 is the biggest, right? So the reason why it, uh, the text, the, the navigations are at the top is because H1 is big and it's taking a lot of space, right? Uh, I'm not even sure where that background came from, <laughs> um, but it has a little bit of background and it's also big. Also, um, yeah, it's, I think it's just the size of H1. It's, it's, it's creating that inconsistency. Uh, all right, let's go back to the way it was. All right, so now it's just everything's aligned. It's kind of like laid out like that. Uh, we want to add 
couple more things. Uh, actually, uh, let's add some padding. So this padding, we talked about last time, padding and margin. I want you guys to remember, try to remember. Yep, space between items, right? We talked about like the football. They put padding in their skin so that they don't get hit. Um, so the border. it's the border. Yep. So what we did here, we added padding around these items right here. So as you can see, the travel is not close to the wall now, but if we remove it, it gets closer there, right? Yeah. Yep. So now the padding, basically what we did was the 10 is top bottom, and then the, the 50 is right left, right? Uh, if we spread it out, then it becomes like clockwise. It starts at the top, one, two, three. So that would be top, right, bottom, left. So if we do something like this, if we do 10, uh, so we say this, and then let's say 50 pixels, 10 pixels, and then 50 pixels. We could do that too. We could just, this would be exactly the same as what we had before. So 10 would be top, 50 would be left, uh, right, bottom, and then, yeah, so it's a simplified version of, of that. Okay. Uh, last thing we want to add here is the background. So we we said the background, we need to change the background, background color. We just want to say um, 2D29546. Uh, Who can tell me what this is? What is this? What, what, what did I just write? Oh. Color, okay. What is it called? <laughs> the type of it. Uh, close. No, uh, close. RGB is the the other one. RGB would be like this. Would be like this. RGB. Yep. You write RGB and then you define the colors like that. This one's called hex. Hex. So yeah. So it's close. Um. But yeah, you guys, you guys listened. I don't know. If you guys were listening. <laughs> uh. Okay. Good. So um. So we defined the background. Um, yeah, so let's let's look at it. So now this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like, but we can't see the colors. Actually, the background of the logo was because I, I highlighted it with my with my you keyboard. It, you yeah. You got a white girl. Are you okay? Okay, well, you okay? Yeah, no, it's a leg Oh, yeah. That's, that's tough, yeah. Yeah, leg Those are the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got to get a good drink, a lot of electrolytes. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of electrolytes, bro. I'm going to get some jitter. Yeah. Okay, so now we can't see because the what happened here. The font size, the font color is not there, right? So that's the next thing we're gonna define is here. We're gonna go down. We're gonna say um, dot nav nav bar a. Why are we saying that? Why are we saying dot dot nav bar a? If you look at the HTML, you're calling class. I'm calling the uh, the nav bar class, and then I'm calling the child of that, which is the a. These a's. All the a's under. Yep, all the a's underneath underneath it. So that's how you call it. And then you just define what they are. So now we just want to change the color. Uh, we're going to go with the AI, but I need to change a little bit. Um, so text decoration and then 20 pixels margin. Right? Yeah, that's right. So now, as you can see, the text is white and we change a little bit here. Uh, next thing, next thing we need to do is the logo, right? The logo is, we don't see the logo, so we just need to change the, how do we do that? How do we change the color of the logo? There's two there's two ways to change it. So this this is what we we need to change the color of the travel now. Oh there's two ways to do it. In this in the CSS. Same thing I did with the A. So we say navbar um h1. Yep. That's one way. The other way, what is the other way? It has its own class, right? Oh, logo. oh, so you can yep. dot logo? Yep, you can say also dot logo. So that's another way to... You could also do dot navbar dot logo. You can do that too. In case there's another logo at, in like at the footer or something like that. Um. So let's change the color. 
we need to change whatever what was the color uh would be white let's change font size to this is where we learn the the size uh let's let's put it one five right <clears throat> so so this font size basically instead of pixels we use the rim so if we go to google and we type um uh, pixels uh, we call pix to rem there's a website where you could just convert those two this website so this website basically helps us understand like if we put uh 16 pixels we're gonna have one rem mm -hmm. if we put like so we put 1.5 rem it's 24 pixels right so that's that's basically what we're saying but this thing is good because it actually resizes according to the screen. Yeah. So Yeah. So the logo, uh, the logo we have becomes uh, smaller or bigger depending on the device. So you wouldn't be able to use uh, so pixel, okay, wouldn't work. No, pixels okay. will not resize. Okay. It will stay the same. Yeah. So how, how can we use pixels? The one above it? Like uh, you go back to the alpha color, yeah. So these are these are basically yeah, yeah. These are margins. So the margins usually it doesn't affect that much. Okay. Uh, so the margins are just the space between two elements. So usually, like if you have a smaller screen, then uh, it's gonna become bigger. Basically, using flexbox, yeah. yeah. So that space will not be affected. But if you're using anything text, I would say always use rem. Okay. Um, if you wanted to, you could use RAM for everything if you want to. Yeah, you could use RAM for everything if you want to. You just have to convert, like, doing, yeah. Um, Matter, what, your size, realistically? Uh, like, if you did 1.6 to 1.5, we're going to, like, Oh, here? Yeah, it actually does matter. 1.6 over Yeah, 1.6. You can see over there. It makes it a little bit bigger. Okay. We say 2 here. It becomes really big. Like, yeah. So it it just depends on like how you want the website look to look like. Okay. Um so we added that. Um uh, and then let's add a margin zero. Uh, I don't think we need that margin zero, but yeah, it's fine. We don't need it. Okay. Um so we did that, we did the logo. Next thing is what is the next thing in our in our HTML? Let me just go back. What is the next thing? So we worked on this. We did this whole thing. Yep. The hero is next. So, yep. So when you're working on a project, this is how you do. It. If I give you like HTML project, you just go one line at a time. You say, okay, did I apply CSS to this? Okay, let's apply CSS to this. So the hero is a picture. So and we don't. I have the picture, but we we need to set it in the CSS. So also what we could do is here we can learn something here. Let's call let's call this. ID actually. Sorry about that. What am I doing? Let's call it here ID. How do you call this in the CSS? Um, uh, hashtag, yep, yep. So when it comes to ID, it's a hashtag. So you say it like that, hero. Right? So if you see any any I ID here, that's a hashtag. And also in the ID. It, you could only add one item in the class. You could actually add other items. You could say other other CSS. You could say something like nav something, and then another class. Blah blah blah. You could add more classes in the ID. You could only add one, and uh, you could only have that. You can't have another hero. It has to be only that. In the class, you could have another nav bar at the bottom, and the CSS is gonna apply the same. If you have another ID, it's gonna show error or issue basically. So okay, those are just the rules for classes and uh and then in the hero, basically we want to define the background image. In the CSS, you could define the image in the background. Uh so a way to define it is you say URL. Here's where you put the URL of the image. So if you have the image in your in your project, you basically say like uh dot slash whatever, and then you define where the image is. Otherwise, you put the actual URL here. So I'm going to grab the URL from my computer here. Uh, so there's a big URL here. So we're just going to go back and just put the URL here. 
So it's just a, a website. I use the uh, uh, Unsplash website. Um, okay, so we define that background. But also we need to define how the background looks like, how big it is. So there's something called background size. It's a cover. So there's different options. You could, you know, uh, go to YouTube, uh, I mean, uh, Google and look for background size, uh, CSS. So W3 talks about it. So there's different ways to do it. Um, you could do auto, you could do cover, you could do, what is it? Uh, yep, yep, right here. So we're doing cover. What, what does that mean? Precise the background image to cover the entire container, even if it has to, it, even if the image has to stretch or cut a little bit of it. Remember on the website, every time we stretch, the image was getting smaller or bigger or cutting part of it. So that's what cover does. And then you have contain, contain, you have initial, data, all this. Usually you use cover or contain most of the time. You don't use like percentage, all this. So these are the two main ones that people usually use. Um, so let's go back to here. And we did cover. And then the last thing we need to do, we need to define the height of the image, how big we want it to be, how, how tall. Uh, so let's do it 500. So if we go back to our project, you see, and uh, we said, um, we, we talk, we said the cover. So now if we resize it, the image shows more. If we make it bigger, it cuts off some of it. So that's what cover does basically. It just kind of shows some of it. And you could change the height and it will show more. So if we make the height bigger, we say here like a, a thousand, it will go ahead and like show the whole image here. Okay. So that's just the background cover. Okay, we did the we did the hero. Uh, what's next? So we want to save time. After the hero, what do we do? Boxes, yeah. So this is a whole thing. So if you want to know uh, what this diff where this diff ends, you click it in your editor and you go down. You see it's highlighted. So this one is the last one, right? So it's highlighted. So we're gonna define boxes first. So boxes is a what do we use it for? What what how do we define the boxes? The boxes. Are we going to use uh, Fluxbox or something else? Flexbox. Yeah, let's use Fluxbox because what we want to do is the boxes to be next to each other. So now they're next to each other, but they're too big. That's why we can't see it clearly. Um, so we said, uh, let's, let me see. We also need to say, uh, we need to add some wrap here. Uh, because we want to so 50 and then we want to add flux wrap and then let's add uh let's say wrap here um we also want to add we don't want to add a gap we're just gonna, gonna keep it also we want to add justify content it's already there it's ai it's too smart it already knows what i'm trying to think okay so that's it uh for this now it's not going to show really nicely um it's so all stacked on top of each other. Um, that's because the image is too big. That's why it's stacked. If the image was smaller, then it would be like right next to each other. Because what is uh, what is what is what is the default? Uh, the default of flex uh, display flex. Is it a row or column? Row. Yeah, row is the default. So it's supposed to show like this, but the image is too big. So let's make the images smaller. To make the images smaller, we need to target the class for each one of them, each box. So each box, this is one box. So let's define that. We're just gonna say dot box. Uh, now we're just gonna say, uh, we, we're gonna define the width and we're gonna say 30%. Why are we saying 30%? There's three of them, right? You could actually say 33. Because we want to divide the 100 into three, three equal amounts, yeah. You can say 33, or if you say 30, it's going to leave a little bit of space. So that, whatever, 3% or 9% is it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the space between between them. Uh, let's define the background color. We're just going to say, uh, let's call it white. Uh, let's add a text align. The text align is just going to move the text into the middle. Uh, text align center. 
And then let's add some margin at the bottom. So it's gonna add a little space at the bottom of the box. Let's add uh let's add actually more here. Let's add 50. So okay. So as you can see, we still didn't define the images, but we defined this text. So we put this text in the middle. Um the titles are there. We just need to define the image. Let's make the images smaller. Right. So we're just gonna say uh, before the image, we're gonna define the H1, the header. Basically, that text that says explore new culture. Let's define that. So it's a H2, I think. Uh, we're gonna say box H2. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna change the font size. Uh, this one size one point three RAM. Okay. Let's uh, let's uh, let's wait for it. Let's wait for the for the other stuff, guys. We uh, we have like maybe like uh thirty minutes left. Let's let's wait on it. So this like on our website, are we gonna make it exactly like that one? I wanna make sure it's it's already the assignment is already there. Okay. Yeah. Going back up to the. The image where you said the height is 500, I'm confused. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, it's so small. Uh, because the image, this size is 500, this whole thing. It's 500. So it's not bringing, it's not bringing up the uh, image by 500. No. So the image is there already. It's just the how much we see is the size. So it's just removing this whole thing. It's pushing it down. And uh, that's what it's doing. So if we make it like 300, it's going to show less less of the image. It's going to show like a little bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just uh, it's just how much we see. That's because we said cover here and we're uncovering it. We're just kind of removing the part. All right. Um, OK, so the H1 is just this one. Um, I'm H2. Uh, and then we're just gonna leave it at that. I'm not sure why I didn't change the size. It's okay. They're they're like horizontal, so we want to make them smaller so that they show properly. So that would be what we're gonna do soon. So let's do also the paragraph, which is the text at the bottom. So we're gonna do box, and then let's do do font size. We could say one rem, which is okay. Uh, and then now this is where we can do the image. Box image. Um, not B, just the image. So we're going to say the image 100%. So that means it's going to fit in the space that it has, basically. No, it's just one. You did. You only did one time. So is that is that the, the, the phone on the Wait, top? Which, which one made it? Yeah, which one made it smaller? Uh, the hundred percent. The hundred percent made it smaller. That's because what we're we trying to say is take the space you have, which is uh, which we defined here, the thirty percent. Oh, use a hundred percent. Hundred percent of that thirty percent. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is basically each box. With the text and the image and the the description is thirty percent, and then we say take thirty percent of of uh, one hundred percent of the thirty percent. Uh, we could also say height. We could say height auto. This will make it so that like if we uh, make it like in one like when we use mobile responsive, the image is going to be a little bit bigger. Um, we're also going to add margin to the top. Uh, so we can, uh, the, the text at the top is a little bit, there's more space to that. So let's add a little bit of margin up, 20 pixels. So it's gonna be like a little space at the top. Um, okay, so the image is done. And then the next would be, uh, so we did the box stuff. And then next would be about. So what I'm going to do about is exactly the same. I'm just going to copy the CSS for the about because it's a little the same as the box. We're just going to define um, those different things. 
So let me copy that. The main thing for today is the responsive. So we want to get to the media query faster. Uh, so in here, we go back here. Just going to paste the about section, which will define that section. So it's going to define the box, the main box of the about. It's going to add some padding. It's going to say display flex. And then it's going to give it a background of aqua. And then it's going to define the image in the, basically in the about, which is this one. And then it's going to say uh, the image 40% of the whole place. It's going to be the image and then the height is auto. And then it's going to give you the margin, which would be uh, which would be the top on the bottom. Uh, and then it's the text is going to be 6%. So as you can see, the image is 40%. The text is 6%. So that would be 100%. Uh, which one here? Yeah, yeah. So once we make it bigger, the auto is going to come into effect. Uh, so we did the about, uh, and also there's actually more to it too. So there's also the newsletter part. So we're also going to copy that part because uh, it's just literally going to be like putting all of them in the middle, right? <coughs> uh, we're going to, uh, in the newsletter, we're just gonna focus on the how to how to style that uh, basic form. Um, let me add more of the about. Where is it? Uh, let's add more. So the text looks nicer now. Um, and then, okay. So the newsletter. We're going to add the first part of it, and then we're going to stop at the form. So all this is the same as the ones we did before. So the next one would be, so as you can see, the news is like, we put it in the middle. Now we're going to define the form. How do we, how do you style a form, right? That's what we want to know. Uh, so we have the form here. Let's go to the HTML. We have the form here. We want to, we want to style it. We want to make it look nicer. So how do we do that? Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to go to CSS and then grab the form. So we want to say dot newsletter, newspaper, I mean, and then form. So the form is an actual element. So as you can see, we're just grabbing it, just like H1 or P, we're just grabbing that form. And then we're just going to say display flex, display flex, uh, we're just going to say justify content. So this will align the space that we have. It's going to move everything into the center. Uh, we're also going to say um, align items center. So this would basically align. What are we trying to focus is this input and then this button. That's it. That's all we're working on right now. Um, and then we're going to say uh, margin top. So what we want to do is we want to move this, we want to put some space between the text and the form, basically. So we're going to say margin top. Uh, let's add some 20%, 20 pixels. So that's just going to move it to the, it's going to add some space here. So next would be the input. That would be this input. Uh, to select the input right here, this input, the first one, uh, we're just going to say, um, we could say we could go, we could go from newsletter. So we could say news newspaper. I mean, newspaper form input. You could say like that. It's nested within each other. So what we want to do is we want to give it a width of thirty uh, three hundred pixels. We want to give it a height of uh forty pixels. We want to give it a um a border of zero. Um. But before we do that, actually, let's just check it out. Yeah. Why, why are you messing with it? The CSS, right? That's because the we said here, we said newspaper form and then input, right? Yeah. The same way right here, newspaper form and then oh, input. Okay. Right? So, so it's kind of like nested. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just uh, kind of defining which which it is. You might have another input somewhere. So if you just say input, it might be it might you know style other inputs on other pages. 
specifically. Yeah, you have to be yeah to be very specific. Uh, so this is how it looks. As you can see, it has a border, so we need to get rid of that border. Let's actually put them next to each other like this. Let's make it like that. Uh, we need to get rid of the border, so we just say border zero, not nine zero. Uh, we need to get rid. Uh, we need to add some. As you can see, it doesn't have anything on the on border. Let's add some um, border radius. Border radius is basically how the sides, how curved it is. So now it's sharp, sharp uh, four edges. We want to make them smoother a little bit. So to do that, we're just going to put it five pixels. You can put 10. It's going to add a little bit of smoothness. If you want to add more, you could just say 10. And then it's going to add a little bit of round, a little bit of roundness to the sides. Um, so it's not that big a deal, but it's usually just uh, if you want to make it look nicer. Let's add some padding. You have a question? No, no, no. I was saying, oh, I was going to say I saw the other four. So you can do the same for top, uh, left, top, right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You could define which side you want to put the uh, border radius. Also, the pattern, what is it doing right now? You can tell me. What am I doing with this pattern? Um, I'm giving it like some space, right? Button, the, the area of the input right yeah. the input is what are we defining we give it a pattern so the pattern is not outside it's not it's not here right yeah. we're not pushing the sign up we're we're pushing this text inside so the pattern defines inside inside the element oh and then margin defines outside the element so it's going to push this up to the side a little bit so let's define the margin um margin let's actually just say margin if we say margin you see the button moves to the side so the pattern is always inside the element and then margin is the margins basically the outside yeah yeah you see you can see a lot let me actually just add more here let's say maybe like uh 40. You see, like this text moves oh, inside. Yeah. yeah. So, so this one it says basically top and bottom zero, and then the right and left forty pixels. They add forty pixels here, forty pixels here, and then zero pixels here. And we could also say, you know, add some pixels on top and left, uh, top and bottom. So we could say something like forty here too, and it's gonna add some speed like that. Right. So that's usually yeah. So this is really good to understand if you want to like if you want to make look if you want to make things look nicer and give it space. Always when you're designing something, it's always good. It's always good to give it some breathing space. So are you basically centering it in a way? Uh, no, just give it a little bit of space. So the text is on the left side, so it's aligned to the left side. I just give it some space between the sides. And also now, if you type something on it, and as you can see, if you go all the way to the uh, it's it does it has some space at the uh, at the back, so it's not like to the wall basically. That's all we're saying. Um, we could add margins on all that, but we'll come back for the margins. Uh, let's uh define the font size. So one rem. Um, okay, and then uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. We added height, all that. Okay. So now let's define the button. So we define the input. We want to make the button look nicer. So let's do that. Um, and then after this, we're going to go to responsiveness or media query. Uh, I'm trying to get my reference here. So all we need to do now is how do we how do we grab the button now? Button is right here. How do we grab it in the CSS? Yeah. Newspaper form. Input, yep. No, it's not inside the input. So it's the siblings of input. Oh, so you say, okay. yep, you stop at, uh, yeah. So we say dot news paper form, input form, and then button. Okay. Uh, that's AI. Um, so we're just going to say width 100 pixels. Uh, and then we're going to say height 40 pixels, border zero. That's fine. Uh, let's add some radius 10. So it's changing that the button right there. Uh, we're going to add background, background color. So background color, 
I, I don't know if that's okay. Let's go with that background color. We want to make the text white because it's black now, so it's it doesn't show right there. And then next, we want to add some font size. So we want to add, let's add one rim is fine. And then we already added the margin here, um, the margin here. So we could add margin here if we want to, but it already has a margin to the left side. So it's all good. We don't need to add the margin there. Uh, cursor too, there's also an option for cursor. It means like if you hover over it, now the cursor kind of looks pointer. Uh, it looks like, um, it doesn't look like you, you want to click it, but if you add pointer to it, it's actually cursor. Uh, no, we don't need a pointer. So that's usually when you're like, actually, if you leave it at it uh, like that, it's going to look like a hand, like when we actually add some, uh, if you can click it, right? Um, all right. So now we added the, we're good with the button. Uh, next thing would be like, we could add hover. We don't have a lot of time now, but when you hover over it, you want to change the color of how it looks. Uh, also, you want to change the focus here. So when we click, that's a call to focus of the input. When you click somewhere else, it your focus is out. So that's called actually it's something that you guys might be asked in an interview. It's called the pseudo class. So what is a pseudo class? Pseudo class is basically how do you define its behavior basically. So the behavior is the C, the CSS is not there. There's no border, but when you click it, there is a border. So that's called the pseudo class. It's basically the behavior of the person. It's, it's the same as when you click a link. When you click a link, the color changes. So that's uh, that's also called the behavior. So the way we change that border is by basically just saying, uh, we're just gonna define the, the button, but we're gonna say hover, right? Form, not hover, sorry, not hover. We're gonna say input and then focus. So this focus input, the focus is connected to the input. So you write exactly like that. And then you just define whatever. So you just say outline none. Uh, so now when we click it, there's nothing, there's nothing. You could also say outline, you could change the color of the outline, you could change whatever. Basically when, you, when the person presses, you could actually make the text bigger or different color or whatever. So that's called focus. So this is pseudo class. Um, it's something that we might learn in the future. Uh, I don't even know how to write a uh, comment here. It's called pseudo class. Um, you could uh, search it in W3 schools. Okay, so now we're done with that uh, section. Uh, there's also the footer, uh, which will just copy the CSS, which we just wanna make it look nicer, that's all. So we're just gonna say footer, background color, you know, color text, padding, we're gonna add some padding to it. Text align, we're gonna put it in the middle. So this is how it looks, just in the middle. And the pattern is basically 30 pixel pattern is basically this whole area is 30 pixels. So that's that's that. And then the last thing we need to do is before our time runs out, which it will, um, I think we, we don't have time for the Git because 8.30, we need to finish by 8.30. So the Git, you guys uh, have to watch the video again. Uh, that would be something that you guys have to do. I have the video, but I'll create another video for you, Shalom. Okay, so let's let's go to the responsiveness. So now, what we want to do is, uh, if we make it bigger, it looks nice in a big screen. It looks really nice, but if we make it smaller, it's not gonna look that nice, right? Uh, as you can see, this is all cramped. We don't want that. We want everything to like change and then stuck stuck on top of each other. As you can see, this image, it doesn't look right. It looks like somebody cut off his <laughs> upper body. And also, we, we, this it's too small here, so we wanna make it a little bit better. So we're gonna add a couple of CSS to make that happen. Uh, so this is where we add, uh, what do we add here? What is it called? We wanna change the media, media query, right? So we wanna add a media query or media, it's called media, but it's actually called media queries. Media, so what are we basically defining is, we're saying here, um, we're just gonna say, we're gonna forget about that screen stuff. We're gonna say here, max width, 640 pixels. So here, what are we saying is, we're saying if the if the max width, if max width is basically like, if it reaches up to like 
if it comes from the bottom, so let's say, say the size is like, let's say maybe this is like 400. So, um, so if we come from the top, come from the bigger and get smaller, it, it's going to reach to like 640 at one point. And I can show you that in the here, uh, right here. So right here at the top, you see 721. If we make it smaller like that. So we're, that's what we're trying to define. Um, so I'll show you an example of it, actually. So let's say background. Uh, let's define the nav bar background color. Right. So let's say background. Let's add some weird background. Let's say red. We want to just see it, how it looks. So if we actually make it bigger now, the background is fine. It's the way it was. 640 by 640, it's going to change to red. Six, boom. <laughs> I'm going to ask, um, is media query the same thing as viewpoint? Or is it... They work together. You have to have both. Yeah, you have to have both. Yeah. Viewpoint, it has to be there. It basically detects the device that you're using and the size of it and all that. And then the media query actually grabs information from the from the viewpoint. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So the media query says, okay, 640 pixels. It it, it waits for the uh, viewpoint and it says, okay, did we reach did we reach 640? And the, uh, the viewpoint reports to it and says, oh, yeah, we reached that. And then the media query kicks in and says, okay, let me, it's my time. Uh, okay, so now you get it. Now we're just going to define things differently than the way we want it. So let's so let's uh, let's do that. Uh, let's change the, instead of the background here, we're going to change the flex box. So we're going to change the flex direction. We're going to change this. We're going to change the column. So the navigation, we want it to stack on, on top of each other when when they reach that point. Uh, we're also going to add some padding because we want them to have some space. So 10 pixels and 20 pixels. So they're going to be on top of each other. So we want to give them like some breathing space between each item. Okay, we did that. that and then the next, we're going to do another one. We're going to do the links. So we're just going to define it the same way as we defined at the top. Now it's just like the opposite, basically. So we're just going to say dot nav bar a uh, margin right zero, margin bottom uh, 10. That's good. Uh, so you uh, let's actually see how this looks. So this is the normal way. And if we reach 640, boom, like that, like this. So that's what we're trying to do. So flex, uh, flex, direction, uh, flex direction column does that whole thing of of a stack on top of each other. Does it have You Yeah, you can make it any, any number, yeah. The only thing is you need to know that some uh, devices have uh, have their own sizes. So phones are usually like anywhere between 640 to 480. Okay. So smaller devices like the old iPhones, or old uh, Androids are like anywhere between like 500 to like uh, 480. Mm -hmm. So there's no device actually smaller than 480 most of the time. Okay. Um, and then iPads are like, uh, basically, or uh, tablets are usually 760, 8, somewhere 8, 800, 800 to like 7, uh, 760. Okay. So you kind of have to like guess it, but like there's actually a whole thing that you could go through that you see the sizes. Okay, next would be just uh, going to add a couple of more here. I'm going to say the hero image. Remember the hero image, the guy, the leg was cut off. Mm -hmm. We want to change that to the height to 300. So his legs are not cut off. Basically, when we reach there, hopefully, actually, they are already cut off. Um, let's actually change that. Yeah. What if media Oh, that's because uh, the name in the CSS, what's the name? CSS, what does it stand for? Cascading style sheet, right? It has to be from the top. Um, so okay. cascading is like a waterfall. So basically, the rules are applied to the top. Okay. So if you put the media query at the top, the media query is around first, and then these are around first. So okay. always put the media query at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, it's in the name. Uh, also, the rules. So let's say you have two two footers, like one footer and another footer, uh, and you have different backgrounds. The one at the top is going to be applied. So it's kind of like... 
Uh, and now let's just add uh, boxes here. Uh, the main thing is for you to understand is like you could make changes in the, uh, let's add some padding here. 20 pixels is fine. And then each box, we want to change it. So here's where, where we're going to change the boxes. This is where they're going to stack on top of each other. Uh, basically, we want each one to be 100%. Instead of 30% earlier at the top, now each one of them is 100% um, when we reach that point. Uh, and then the last thing, couple of things here. We're just going to copy these. It's about... The about section is basically like we want the image to be at the top, the big image that says about, and they want the text to be at the bottom. So they stacked. So that's what we're going to do. All right. All right. So now, as you can see, this is how it looks finally. Uh, we'll figure out that image. So as you see, this is the uh, boxes. The about is still not right. Something is wrong. What's wrong? Uh oh, I some I'm I missed one one more thing. I need to make it flex direction. Uh, column yeah, that's it. Where is it? Where is my stuff? Flex direction column. So we left that here. So let's add that, and that should make it work. So you see the text at the bottom, and then the form is already small, so it's fine. Um, so that's, that's, that's how you do it. Um, so let me quickly show you, do we have time? We have 10 minutes. Okay. I can show you the, how to submit the, the homework basically with, with Git, uh, for more information, you could go to the video. You can see, I have a whole video about it. So this is the, I'll share with you this whole project. I'll put it in GitHub and you can see the code and all that. Um, so let's, uh, let's go here and let's yeah. Um, that one was the, the terminal. Yeah, the terminal you have an issue with? Yeah. Yeah. So that is usually each computer is different. Mine was working, it was it was fine. Okay. So I need to like see at your computer. We can okay. we can look at it. Okay, so homework, the assignment for next this coming week or this week. Advanced CSS assignment. Instructions. You need to have account in GitHub. Sorry, looked it too soon. Uh, you need to have an account in GitHub, uh, and your project needs needs to look like this, right? Um, so some of you didn't finish the the project, the older one. So it doesn't make sense uh, if you if you didn't finish the older one, the the week two, then this will not make sense because like you have to do the one first. So, the, the, so what I will do is I will give you the code for the Fatima one that looks like the uh, week two, and you can use that. I'll actually update this. I'll update the GitHub so that it has like index.html uh, and then the CSS. So now would you, your job would be to add the, uh, uh, what is it called? The, the responsiveness basically all over the, the project. Um, so for the project, so this is what we're gonna do. If you wanna work on the project, you click here, this is where you're gonna come. Uh, assume that, you know, pretend like there's already stuff in there. Uh, so what do we need to do is we need to fork it first. First step is forking, fork right there. What is fork? Fork is basically make a copy for me. So you just click it and then it will create a fork for you. It will not create one for me because I already have one. Um, but yeah, it, it will create one and you can just click here, create fork. Once you do that, next step would be, you could actually follow the steps here too. I have the, I usually have the instructions here. So fork project and then next it will be clone it. How do you clone it? You click here where it says clone. You copy this URL and then you open the terminal in your computer, right? So if you have a Mac, it's already there. If you don't have a Mac and you have Windows, there's a, a thing called uh, Git Bash. Git Bash. So this Git Bash is basically, sorry, why is my keyboard not working? Um, the PowerShell, I wouldn't use that one if, uh, because it, it has a limited features. It has a limited features. Yeah. Um, somehow my, okay. 
So git bash, install this one if you have if you have Windows. Git bash, install this one. This one is equivalent to the to the Mac. So install it in your Windows. Yeah. So this one, I'll I'll sh I'll send you the link to it too. But in 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 Mac, you have the terminal right here, which actually let's actually clear it. So the terminal is basically a uh, a place where you can run code, basically commands. Yeah. Uh, so we do that on VS Code now, not Code anymore. Yeah, only on VS Code. Yeah, from now. It's free, right? Yeah, VS Code is free. Yep, install it in your computer. Um, also, there's a whole video about what I'm doing right now. So if you're confused about this terminal, watch the video. It's in the email, and I can send it to you if you guys didn't get it. So in here, uh, clear. What are we trying to do here is we already we're already in a folder. It's called introduction to CSS. What do we need to do is we need to get out of that folder. And then to get out of it, you say CD dot dot. That means push me back or like go back. And then that will take you back. So you can see now we're in a folder called MYDC. That will be where I usually put my stuff. So we're going to do clone. So we're going to do git clone. And also I'll send you a list of all these commands. Git clone, git this, git that. So when you say enter, it will just grab all the code from GitHub and put it in your computer. That's all it does. So now if we say ls, which is list uh, the directory or list everything, it's going to show you what you have. We have introduction to CSS, week one, da, da, da. We also have a responsive design, which is the one we want. So let's go inside that responsive design. So you could just type the first three letters and hit tab on your keyboard, and it will fill out for you. And you can say ls. And this would be what we got from GitHub, right? So now let's make change. Let's pretend like you guys are working on the project. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open it with uh, VS Code. Uh, so it's this one. So we're going to open it with VS Code. You could grab it and open it with Visual Studio Code. Um, trust, whatever. Uh, now we're just going to add .html here. I mean, HTML dot, uh, index.html. And we're gonna pretend like there's something here, HTML. Okay, we're just gonna leave it at that. Uh, so now, if we go back to the terminal, it's gonna say, and, and we run command called git status. It's gonna say there's changes. You change something. So git is basically it tra keeps track of like even a tiny change, even a dot keeps track of that. That thing DS store is a default thing for Mac computers. So it just comes automatically every time you clone something from GitHub. But we added the index.html. Now it's on main branch. We're trying to take advantage of time, but you could watch the video for more. It's on main branch. So what are we going to do is we're going to change the branch to ours. So we're going to say git checkout B, and then we could create our own branch. So usually I say my name. So you say your name or your name and then your last name, right? Whatever you can write, whatever there you want, but in, in like uh, production, let's say you're working with a team. So they will tell you, hey, go go ahead and create your own branch. When they say go ahead, create your own branch, it's basically they're telling you the future you're working on. Let's say they ask you to work on the navigation. The branch, you're going to call it navigation, right? So that when you submit your changes, the people who are reviewing, they can see like you're actually working on the navigation. So, but for now, we're just going to call it our name. Now, as you can see, switch to new branch. You can say git branch, and then that will show basically like the branches we have. We have main, and then we have the run. Um, now we're just gonna submit our changes. So git add dot, that will just push the changes we made to the git system basically. And then if it doesn't give you any error, that means it's good. Uh, and then we're gonna commit. The commit is basically saying, okay, this is the final. So let's push this completely to the system. Um, the commit is also you say slash m, and then I I, I have this in the in the student portal like as a uh, the notes. Uh, so you you leave a comment here. This comment is basically like changes you made. So the team you're working on, you want to explain your the changes. You want to be clear about it. So you say something like I um I added something to index.html. This will help other team understand what are you making changes what changes you're making basically. So finally, we're gonna send these changes to, to GitHub. To send it, you say git push uh, uOrigin, and then you basically mention your branch name, right? 
you say the run I don't know how this will work uh so this is where you had the issue last time yeah uh so it's asking me my access here so I'll say run uh and it's asking me other things so here's here's where you put the we're on time but you put you, you need to grab something called token from github so GitHub used to use password. You could just use the password, type your password there. But for security purpose, they don't allow that anymore. So you have to go to GitHub and get the token. So you have to go here, settings, and then go to developer right here, developer settings, and then create a token here. You have to go and create a token. So I usually go with the classic. If it doesn't work for you, you go to the other one. I'll, I'll, I'll create something about that. Uh, a video, but you need to create a token here. Let's go with the classic, and then it's gonna ask my password, which I had not read it to. Okay, so here you say test token, whatever you could call it here, and then you give it permissions. Basically, you say like uh, no expiration if you want. It's not it's not safe to say that, but you can say that, and then we can say repo. You can just leave it at repo for now but you can select all of them if you want. Generate it. We copy this code. This code, once you copy it, it's going to disappear. So you have to put it somewhere in where you could remember. Um, let's just put it in our HTML or something for now. Okay, let's put it right there. Uh, in the terminal, it's asking me for the password, the same password, but you actually paste the code in there, the, the token. But it's not going to show anything. The terminal, when it's a password time, it doesn't show anything. You just paste it and you just enter. See, it works. So this one worked. So yours was maybe because of the internet or something. So now the changes are in GitHub. So if we go back to GitHub, it's and and we go to go back to the project. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back to my my profile it's going to show that the changes we just made um where is it uh we're trying to find sort by last updated no let's last updated uh let's go here what was the project name advanced css or something uh yeah design a uh, responsive design let's just put design here uh, yeah, right here. So if we click that, it's going to show the probably the fork we just did. Uh, the the uh, It's going to show the changes we just made. So if we go to right here, pull request. Pull request basically means like someone is trying to like make changes to this project. So as you can see, this is the, oh, this is the old one. I'm not sure. Oh, did we say push? Let's go here. Uh, it did push. Uh, oh, the problem is, oh no, I messed up. <laughs> I pushed to the main one. This one is the main school one. So you guys are gonna grab the changes I just made, right? Uh, but I can show you, if we go, if we go back here. I, I was supposed to fork it and do all that, but if we go back to the original one, which is this one, as you can see, it's saying one minute ago, the run, it was pushed. Some changes were pushed. Now the changes are not still in the main. So this is the main branch. So in like in the industry, when you work in in like a larger company, I worked in like uh, huge companies. Basically, they don't allow you to touch this. They're just gonna be like uh, make you changes. Somebody else is gonna approve it. They're not gonna allow you to like push to this because the minute you push to this or you make the changes here, it's gonna start a process where it, it's gonna send it to the production basically. Um, there's also other steps too. They're gonna do testing and all that stuff. They don't just allow you to just touch this. So your changes are gonna be here. You're gonna say create a pull request. Pull request is basically saying, hey, I made changes. Uh, somebody review it and, and send my changes. Usually you add reviewer here. So uh, you add a reviewer. So your teammates and stuff. So in case somebody asks you about like, hey, add me as a reviewer, you just click here and type their information here. And you write some description about wh whatever you made the changes for, and then you create a pull request. Uh, minus is straightforward, but usually when it's this step, 
it's gonna run some tests, it's gonna say, you know, if you did something wrong or not. The internal thing is only for MacBooks, right? It's also for Windows too. Uh, so for Windows, you use this website, you use this software. You use Git git it's called Git Bash. So download this one. It's it's gonna be same as the Mac. So it's gonna be yeah, I will I'll send the link. I'll send the email with everything. Uh the links and everything. Okay. But yeah, so the pull request and then after that you're done. Uh, you send me after you say the pull request, you send me the link of the pull request to the assignment. But I have a whole video about that, so you should be good. Hey. Yeah. All right, y'all. Happy finals day for those who have finals. Oh, yep, yep. They're going to. Well, it's not the truth, but it's.